Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the new Armor Rush in the Open Ultra League. We're going to have some test battles here as this Pokemon got newly released today. And mostly we're going to take a look at the other one as well, forgot the name of it, laid on as well. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe if you have not already. And if you enjoy this content for those new Pokemon, feel free to leave a like. Of course, I went outside and had to hatch some new eggs, which was kind of not that much fun. But I actually got it out of my first 10 kilometer egg, which was kind of nice. So at least there the chance is um like basically if you didn't see that before the for the two kilometer eggs it's like four egg chance basically so it's a very rare spawn for the two kilometer eggs for the five kilometer eggs i think it's like in the three egg slot and for 10 kilometer eggs it's in like the easiest slot to get so 10 kilometer eggs are kind of what you really want to go for or two kilometer eggs i feel like three kilometer eggs if the odds are kind of like it's uh, shown there is maybe a little bit more tricky to get them for but yeah for me first 10 kilometer Egg, I got this one. I actually got another one already from like a two kilometer egg, so definitely way easier to get than Volcarona. Here we will see now as well a matchup where Armor Rouge is going to take down the opponent. We have two grass types here, very favorable for us, of course. And we're going to have an interesting move set. Also, we have an interesting typing. We have the Victini typing of the um, Psychic and Fire type, and we have a great move set to go with it as well. As we can now hop on into the next game, we're going to have here um, the Gallade against us. Also, like, a lot of um, new Pokemon going to be used against me here today. Also, buffed um, Awkward Tail Gyarados, I guess. Yeah, um, I was hoping, basically, that I would be able to get to two Shadow Balls in time against the opponent's Gyarados. Because, yeah, I know that they're going to outspeed me just barely, but because of, like, Incinerate and how it works, maybe I win CMP, I don't really know. So I decided to use a shield here in hindsight. This was a really, really silly shield, because... I would have been able to resist basically all the charge moves onto my lead of Guzzlord and it's not really worth it for me to keep uh, using shields here because you need shields for the Armor Rouge. Armor Rouge is a very squishy Pokemon but also kind of similar to Talonflame having access to the move Flame Charge plus Incinerate is going to add up quite a bit if you have those shields and so this matchup is going to be actually a very cool one. Here we're going to see the opponent going to have an Emporion now as well so like all of the buffed Pokemon basically we're going to be able to reach another charge move again it's going to be the crunch. We're gonna not get any debuff at all, which is kind of unfortunate. Don't really know if it matters, but we're going to see. Yeah, no, I don't think it really matters at all. But we're going to be able to go for the full farm down and now go for the flame charge, which will be able to lock, knock them out here, plus giving us an attack buff onto our armor rouge. Armor rouge typing is going to be able to resist all the moves of the opponent's um, galate, which is also really cool. So a close combat resisted, the leaf blade resisted, but of course, again, we are a very very squishy pokemon so does not really matter that we resisted if we're gonna still get two shot by it we can farm on the opponent here can we farm on also the galate we die on one hp onto the opponent and we lose the cmp tie what a game but yeah very unfortunate good game to the opponent though well played there for sure Moving on to the next opponent, we're going to have a pretty bad lead for us, and we're going to see a swap that's actually okay for us. We're usually going to be able to get a shield advantage here, which is going to be great for us. As I can go for the bait, usually I just go for the shadow ball, because if the opponent plays it correct, they're just going to go for the hard-hitting move here anyway, which is going to be that liquidation. And um, yeah, here of course the defense drop may be actually mattered. Maybe I would have been able to survive and still get to a move without the defense drop. We will never know, but uh, we will see now that the opponent is sadly running the move extra, doing a ton of damage again. Against us, we can still reach our Dragon Claw, but can our armor rush here go for a full sweep? We will find out shortly. We're gonna swap out immediately. As they're going to have a great matchup against the opponents, Annihilate, but they're going to swap out now into the Weezing. This is going to be also a favorable matchup. So both Pokemon are going to be weak against psychic type moves, which is going to be great as we have Psy Shock and we do a ton of damage as well. So I go for the Psy Shock here as well. I wanted to shield up the Brutal Swing because I was like, yeah, it might do a little bit too much damage. We are very, very squishy, so I'm a little bit more careful. And so I decided to shield up the next move as well, thinking it might be a Shadow Ball already. It's a Night Slash, and we lose. Because of a 12.5% chance, in hindsight, I should have just let one move go from the Weezing. Like, the Weezing was kind of safe that we still would survive it. I'm not too sure if we actually still would have won because, like, I'm fairly certain that the opponent would have farmed us down still, but like of course the attack buff here completely gave us the rest and so we're going to lose this game sadly, good game there, but we can move on to the next one. You have to say we have to replay this game um, 
after like five seconds or whatever, I forfeited because I lagged out in the beginning for a little bit. So I knew that they're going to have a talent flame. I knew that they're going to have the annihilate there. Um, while they knew about now my entire team actually as well, which is so basically we both knew most of our Pokemon. But of course we replayed with the same teams. Here we were able to still get the knockout. This is the cool thing about Skeledurge. You can just go for one disarming voice against the annihilate and still go for the full farm on before they can reach another Shadow Ball. Yeah, we can go for the Shadow Ball against the opponent's Talent Flame, which is gonna put us basically into a great spot as unless they have Brave Bread, we still should be able to survive this one and get a shield then from the opponent. They're running fly, and so we can still reach the disarming voice. Let's see if the opponent's going to use a shield here or not. They decide to let this move go through, actually still survive, and we can swap out now against the opponent's Emporion into our Armor Rouge, and we should be able to outspeed them at least to the next move then afterwards because we need one less fly uh, incinerate here to go for another flame charge afterwards so we should get two shields from the opponent while also dealing a ton of damage like we are so attack weighted that it's going to allow us to just chunk away the opponent's health here which is going to be great we're gonna see here another incinerate coming through and look at the health of the opponent we already put them into the deep um rat health here as well which is great as a fire type against a water type pokemon of course this steel typing going to help us quite a bit but as you can see here gasol is going to be able to go for the full farm loan by the way this team has a ginormous hole in tapu finny which i completely forgot about but i never faced one so like it's not going to be an issue but yeah if you would want to use this team tapu finny would be an issue for you for sure but yeah, actually I had the Obama Snow in the lead before, and so this would have been great here for the Dragonite as well. But my Obama Snow has really, really bad stats, and so I didn't really want to use it. I have to build a new one for the Ultra League for sure. And so I went for the Gaslord. Obama Snow definitely would help you out quite a bit with the weakness. But Gaslord is really, really cool against those um, Feraligator, which I expected to see quite a bit. Here we're going to see actually the Suicune, which is interesting. And honestly, I really like the idea of the opponent here. I would mostly not go for the Suicune as a Sace or whatever which i think they only did here basically because of what um yeah they're going to have them back which you're going to see soon but i feel like this is actually a really cool team by the opponent so shouts to you i actually maybe gonna copy this because they're gonna have the feraligator in the back and i feel like suicune and feraligator in the back are kind of so similar but also kind of so cool together here we're going to forfeit because there's no real point of playing this one out there's no way of what us winning this so we can move on to the next opponent interesting pokemon in the lead i could have stayed in there I decided to swap out and yeah, we're going to get out the opponent's Greninja, which is going to be great for us. And um, what I have to say as well, again, of course, people are going to know what I'm going to run here. It's going to be friendly battles from Twitter. Like it's not going to be random Go Battle League battles as the Ultra League is not really available right now. So people are going to know as well that I'm going to run Armor Rush. I cannot know, of course, if people are going to build teams directly against it. I know that I'm going to encounter quite a lot of Pokemon that I would have not really liked to see as an Armor Rouge. But yeah, maybe this Pokemon might be a little bit better in the open Ultra League, which we can take a look at again when the Ultra League is going to be available in a week. So definitely a Pokemon that might be on my list that I kind of want to take a look at. And yeah, let's take a look here at the next opponent going to go for a charge move. It's going to be the Earth Power, which we can still swipe and I can swap out. They can sadly just go for the Poison Fang, which still would be neutral, and so I'm forced to use a shield. And we see what they're going to have in the back. It's going to be literally the hardest wall of Gaslord, and so we can just fall for this game. Team of the opponent, by the way, made a lot of sense. Like, I don't really want to blame them of, like, trying to build something that completely hard walls us. It just completely hard walls us. But, like, the team itself does make a lot of sense. The Queen Double Dark is something that has been really decent for ages. So, like, I don't really want to give any shade there. I just wanted to make this clear real quick. So, we're going to see our next opponent again. Another Galissapod. A lot of Galissapods here as well, which, of course, is going to be a little bit tricky for us to deal with. But uh, this time around, uh, this Galissapod is going to be a little bit different from the last one we faced. Because they are actually not going to run Exorcism. Spoiler alert, of course, as you cannot see it yet, but of course, I just did those battles, so I remember they are running the Aerial Ace, which is going to be way better for us, as now this allows us to go for the full farm down, allowing us to get to basically nearly 100 energy, which is great, and I can swap out immediately. And we have the Feraligator as another hard wall in the back, but do I care? I do not care, because honestly, Armorush is going to do so much damage. Of course, we take a ton of damage, as you can see already, as being just at half health without even getting hit by a charge move. But we just do so much damage with our Pokemon that I can just go for another Psyshock. Psyshock is coming through, going to connect against the opponent, doing a ton of damage, and 
they are in farmdown range and i like when they're in farmdown range because as you can see here now armorish is just gonna go for the full sweep and so we can reach the flame charge going to be able to knock out the opponent scissor and we just gonna burn them down good bye there good game to the opponent we can move on to the next one we're going to encounter a fairly decent lead as they swap out into the Annihilate. I can swap out into my Scalar Dirge. Kinda easy matchup for us. Again, we have to use a shield. If they go for the Shadow Ball, that would be deadly. And they decide to go for the Shadow Ball, allowing me to go for an extra fast move. Best kind of way of aligning your own fast moves against the opponent. And we can reach another disarming voice against the opponent here, as we will be able to go for the full farm down. We're going to see that the opponent is going to go into their tentacle now which is going to be okay for us shadow ball is going to connect shadow ball is going to be great for us as we will see that we can still try to reach another move here it is going to be another shadow ball connecting against the opponent either forcing the shield or the ko or never mind they actually still survive with like a few hp left but that's going to be okay because it's perfect farm for one incinerate of armor rouge so can armor rouge win this game Unlikely. Um, yeah, this is going to be a Pokemon that is going to be very tricky to deal with for this team as well, at least in the scenario that we're at, where the opponent has a shield advantage. If they didn't have a shield advantage, I think I would have been fine here. I had to hope that they're going to bait here, so that's why I went for the no shield. I didn't really give up immediately. I had to hope for the, no uh, for the icy one, but it didn't work out. So we have to move on into the final battle. Worst possible lead. Basically, worst possible lead. And also... Yeah, this kind of on me here. I went for the bait because I expected, yeah, maybe they're going to go ahead and go for a shield. They decided to not do that. And so, yeah, we're going to be able to go ahead and go for a shield here against the opponent and just try to bait the Shadow Ball again because I kind of want to get at least a little bit of an advantage here now as well. Now I get the Shadow Ball off and I get them a little bit lower, which is going to be better for us to farm them down later on. I'll let this move go through as this is going to be a Shadow Ball anyway. We can go into our Gas Lord, go for the full farm down. We don't have to do anything here. Like, the opponent only has, I guess, like, if they would run Shadow Ball Ice Beam, they would have a super effective move against us, but nobody's gonna do this. And so we can go for the full farm down and have a ton of energy again. In comes the Obama Snow, they swap out immediately into their Talon Flame. It is what it is. It is going to be a tricky matchup for us, but the opponent makes a huge mistake, which we're going to see now as well. They're going to overfarm by a little bit too much, allowing us to win the CMP tie. We easily win the CMP tie. Armourouge, again, is a very attack-weighted Pokemon, and so... I can let this move go through. The opponent goes for a Brave Bird, and so they cannot go for a back-to-back -back move, and so I can still reach a Dragon Claw to knock them out. If I went for the full farm, then I would have not been able to do it. The opponent had a little bit too much HP there. But now I can go for the Crunch, and I have to hope for the debuff. Please debuff the opponent's defense. And it does, which is going to be important, because... If they have Icy Wind, that's going to be tough. They have the Icy Wind, and can we actually still win this game like this? I can reach another Crunch here in time. This is going to do as much damage as before, but we did more damage with our fast move. Can we still farm down? We can, and so this is going to be a good game. This is going to be it for this video as well. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like. Would really appreciate it, and i see you in the next video. See you later on then for, I think, Sarulich is the name of the Pokemon. But I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.